Oh my, look at this lovely beach from our community. I just love looking at this lovely beach splashing in the waves. And maybe I should get some to eat. Oh, I'm kind of hungry, but I don't know what to eat. Yo, you a tourist, dude? What's up? Hey, you need something? Yeah, I was just wondering, like, where I could go to eat or something like that. Oh, no sweat, dude. We got this rad pizza shop down there. See it? It's called the California Crust. The California Crust? Wow, that sounds awesome. I'm gonna go get some pizza. See ya, dude. Yeah dude see ya i'm like a local here so like i know all the good places uh yeah okay see ya bye Mmm, yummy pizza wait a second what the heck is that kanye west he's like a vip yo i'm conway conway yo i'm kanye i'm here at the movie theater here to see space magic adults i love to see adults that can do magic in space definitely not ripping off star wars because there aren't any kids in star wars only adults actually well also vote for me 2020 baby let's do this What's up guys? Welcome to the Quirky Quint channel. If you're new to the channel, thank you so much for dropping by. I hope you enjoy this video. And if you're coming back, thank you guys for coming back for one more video. Guys, today we are reviewing the brand new beach game from AEG called Santa Monica. Santa Monica is a card drafting game in which you and the other players are competing to build the most appealing and charming beachfront community and neighborhood filled with locals, shops, restaurants, and maybe even a famous VIP. But before we get into my thoughts and opinions on this game, let's go over a little bit of the gameplay. Santa Monica is a card drafting game for two to four players and it takes about 45 minutes to an hour to play. In Santa Monica, players will be taking turns selecting cards, adding them to their beachfront pier, and scoring victory points for different combinations of cards they have in their pier. Players will be completing different requirements and different combinations of cards in their pier in order to earn the most victory points at the end of the game. There are multiple ways players can score victory points, but we'll talk about that in a second. At the beginning of the game, each player will semi-randomly select one of these starting feature tiles. Each of these feature tiles takes up a beachfront space and a boardwalk space and contains a few starting items. For instance, this starting tile gives you a VIP and a sand dollar and also the starting tiles also give you victory point requirements that your VIP can achieve throughout the game. For instance, this tile says for each business and local spot visited on the street by your VIP, you will score one victory point. You will then set this tile down in front of you as I have done here. The rest of the game is pretty simple. Players are gonna take turns taking cards and placing them either in the beachfront section of their town or on the street section of their town. You can tell which card goes where simply by if it has a street, it goes in the street section, and if it has a beach, it goes in the beachfront section. On your turn, you can do one of two things. You can either take a card from the front row of these cards right here, or you can pay sand dollars to take one of these sand dollar actions. This action is always free. This action, you have to pay sand dollars. So for example, say it's my turn. I could just take this card right here, the skate park looks like, and I could just add this to my beachfront. So after you take the card you want, make sure to take its bonus and action. So when I take this card, I get two locals. I add them to this card and then I can move up to three of any people. So as the game goes on, you're gonna get different people to add to your cards. There are tourists, there are locals, and each person starts with one or two VIPs, and you can never gain VIPs later in the game. So after you take the card you want, make sure to take its bonus and action. Refresh the cards by taking the card in the top row, dropping it down to the cards in the lower row, and then adding a new card to the top row. The second action you can take is the sand dollar action. So say uh, I had two sand dollars in my sand dollar supply, I could pay two sand dollars to take a card with a tourist tag or a card with a local spot tag from anywhere in these rows of cards. So if I pay two sand dollars, I could take this card since it has a tourist spot tag, or I could take this card because it has a local spot tag. I'm gonna take this card, I'm gonna add it to my street, and then I'll gain the card bonus of four tourists. 
I'll add them to my card. And that's basically the gameplay. Now the real meat of the game comes in the way that you score victory points. Now you'll see listed on the bottom of your cards, if they're street cards, and the top of the cards, if they're beach cards, that there are different little icons in the corners. These icons are how you determine how you're going to score victory points with those cards. So let's start out with this card, for example. This card has a local spot icon here and then a two victory point number next to it. This means if this card is next to any other cards with a local spot tag, it will score two victory points. This particular icon down here is called adjacency, and it's one of the ways you can score victory points. This card right here has a business tag in the bottom right corner with a five victory point icon next to it. This means if you can create a chain of three or more cards with business tags, then at the end of the game, you will score five victory points. For example, this chain includes one, two, three, four, five, six, seven business tags. Therefore, at the end of the game, this card would score you five victory points because you reach the three required business tags in order to get these victory points. A third way you can earn victory points is through unspent sand dollars. If you have a card that looks like this with a one, a one, or there might be a two and a one, it's just a ratio down in the corner. This means that for every unspent sand dollar you have, you score a victory point at the end of the game. So if I had two unspent sand dollars, I'd get two victory points. If I had three unspent sand dollars, I'd get three victory points and so on. The fourth way you can score victory points is through activity rings. Activity rings are these little rings that you'll find on your cards. Activity rings will score you victory points if you have the required amount of people and color of people in that ring. For example, this activity ring right here requires three people of any color. So I could put three locals in this card and this card would score me four victory points at the end of the game. Another way you can score victory points is through your VIP. Now this VIP likes to go to different shops and stuff. He's like, ooh, I like businesses and tourist spots. You can see which card they wanna visit indicated by these tags at the top of this card. So every time you move this VIP and he visits a location he likes, you leave a little footprint. So this is a business. When he goes here, he leaves a footprint. If he goes over to this spot, it's also a business, so he leaves a footprint. He goes over here, it's also a business, he leaves a footprint. You get the idea. At the end of the game, every footprint is worth one victory point. Another global way everyone can score victory points is through the scoring objectives. Each game, you will randomly select one of these scoring objective tiles. Place that somewhere in the play area. At the end of the game, you'll also score points for how many of these goals you completed and to what extent you completed those goals. For example, this goal is two victory points per tag in your largest chain of tags. So at the end of the game, my longest chain is one, two, three, four, five, six business tags. So I would get 12 victory points. The game ends when one player gets 14 cards added to their peer. Everyone takes another turn until everyone gets an equal amount of turns. And then you count up the victory points and see who has the most. The person with the most is the winner. I also want to add real quick, this is the food truck and this is the foodie. If you take a card above the food truck, you get to take a sand dollar and add it to your supply. If you take a card above the foodie token, you get to move any one person in your beachfront community one space. After you take a card that was above either the foodie or the food truck, move the food truck one space to the right. That's basically how to play Santa Monica. Let's get into the review. Hey guys, thanks for watching up to this point. I hope you're enjoying the video. If you enjoy my content and you'd like to see more, please consider clicking that subscribe button and turning on notifications because I release new board game videos every Friday and I really don't want you guys to miss out on what I have planned for the rest of this summer. I'm also doing a little challenge for you guys. So it's always been a goal of mine to get to 100 subscribers and I think we're really, really close. I think we only need like 15 more subscribers or something like that. So here's the challenge challenge that I proposed last week. If we get to 100 subscribers by the end of the summer, I will reveal why I call my channel Corky Quinn. I know it's not really related to board games and that's confused some people, so I just want to clear things up. When we reach 100 subscribers, so go ahead and click that subscribe and help us out with the challenge. All right, enough of that. Let's get back to the review.
Okay, Santa Monica was a great little game to pull out and play. It doesn't take a ton of time to play and it's pretty easy to teach. It can get a little confusing with all the different icons and stuff, but overall, solid game. First, let's talk about what I liked about Santa Monica. Santa Monica does a great job with player interaction. Even though each person is working on their own peer and stuff, it does a great job of creating player tension by creating a limited supply of cards. And let's face it, some cards are better than other cards. So it's gonna create that tension of, oh, a lot of people are going for that card. Are they gonna save their sand dollars when a good card pops up? Do they really wanna push and try and get that one card before another player? Or are they just gonna wait? to see if something better shows up. There were a lot of times that a person just spent, you know, some cash, cashola, cashola sand dollar to get a card that they wanted or multiple cards only to find that when they refill the deck, something better appeared. That could create a lot of uh, frustration, but it's kind of like the good frustration, you know, like, oh man, oh, if only I had known. And that's that bit of randomness that makes it fun and keeps everyone on their toes and keeps everyone engaged in what's going on in the pool of cards. Ow, I just hit myself with my ring. Ow! Santa Monica is also a lot more analytical and thinky than what you would expect. Don't be fooled by this playful art on the cover because Santa Monica packs some strategy. Is that a thing, I guess? Players will really have to think hard about how they want to optimize their cards to score them the most victory points. It's hard because you want to take some actions and move your players around, but you also want to get cards that contribute to your victory points. The mechanics of this game are super simple. You have two actions. You can take a sand dollar action or you can take a card. And I guess those aren't even two separate mechanics. It's just one, really. Pick a card. What card do you want? Simple. Hmm. Now, if you guys have been watching my channel for a while, you know I love good art and good game design. Now, there are a lot of great games out there with great game mechanics, but they're just so boring. I don't like how they look. I know it seems shallow to only worry about the aesthetic and not actually how the game plays, but it doesn't kill anybody to have a great looking game that also plays great. Santa Monica does great in both of these categories. The art in Santa Monica feels kind of like a comic book that you're living out. I love the art in here, how it has all these different little restaurants and stores. In fact, when I was playing, some people just picked a card because they liked the art on it. They're like, uh, I mean, yeah, it's kind of nice, but I really want a pizza shop, boy. The theming of Santa Monica is very strong, combined with the art as well as the VIP and locals, how at the end of the game, locals can move more spaces than tourists because obviously they know the area, and how the VIP likes to visit certain locations. Santa Monica is able to transport you into a little beachfront community even if you're at your own home. If your home is already in a beachfront community, then you're just being extra. No, seriously, if you're living on the beach, kind of jealous, not gonna lie. As the game progresses, it's also fun to see the expansion and growth of everyone's peer. So, you know, at the beginning, you're just gonna start with your one little condo. And as the game goes on, you get to expand and grow and see all your little shops you're adding. And you also get to see the expansion and growth of everybody else's peers as well. For those of you who are used to paying resources to get buildings and things like that, might feel a little strange to just get one for free. You know, like, do, do I deserve this? I, I haven't paid anything for it. Yes, you deserve it. Take a break. Don't worry about spending wood to build a house. Don't worry about rolling dice to gain resources. This is for you. It's a free gift. Enjoy it! Okay, now let's talk about the tension. The main tension in Santa Monica is trying to take the card with the best card bonus or card action that's gonna help you the most while also contributing to whatever chain, adjacency, or other victory point condition you're trying to complete. It's really hard to try and get a card that fulfills all of those categories. You know, you might see a card that gives you a really good action or bonus, but it's not really gonna help you that much at the end of the game. If you take two many of these cards, cards that will only help you in their bonus or action, they will in a sense clog up your beachfront community. They're not going to contribute to victory points at the end of the game and eh, you're just meh. Nobody bleh. They just meh. We don't like them. No, no, no. We only want the good stuff. Now granted you are going to have some of those cards. You just got to be careful with how many of those you take and if you do take them, you do want them to somehow contribute to your score at the end of the game. All right, now let's talk about some things I wasn't super crazy about. Dare I say, didn't like? Now, the first thing is something that could be a flaw in my strategy, but a lot of these cards up here 
are gonna give you loads of people, tourists, locals, more tourists, okay? These people will only help you if you can get them into a ring. Now, rings are hard to get into because you have to take a card that gives you the move action. So you can take cards with the move action, but guess what? Sometimes those give you more people. And then at the end of the game, you got all these people out here and they're not in rings. They're not gonna score you victory points. In fact, according to this bonus, they're actually gonna make you lose victory points. This says the player with the most unplaced people gets minus four victory points. That's annoying. Now this could be a flaw in my strategy, but I found that it's really hard to get cards that help you move people without getting more people to move around. It's just a bad cycle. You're trying to move people, so you take a card that helps you move people, but then you get more people and you're like, ah, what am I doing with all these people? I don't need them. Now there are some sand dollar bonuses in here that can actually remove people from your cards and those are pretty handy. But then again, you only draw two from all eight of these and there's not a guarantee that you're gonna get those every game. So just be careful with how many people you get into your beachfront pier because you might be getting too many. Another thing I noticed was there's some bonuses on this tile that says two victory points per wave and your longest wave chain or whatever, wave group. This means that for your longest chain of cards with wave tags, you'll get two victory points for each wave in that chain. But as we played the game, there weren't that many waves in the game. You're like, where are the waves? So rarely anyone ever scored victory points from that. So just be wary, you know, if you're actually gonna go for that victory point, you're gonna need to get every wave card or almost every wave card you see because there's not that many in the deck. Also, these things I just mentioned might not necessarily be a bad thing in the game. It just could be I have a bad strategy. All right, guys, that is my review of Santa Monica. Thank you for watching all the way to the end. I really appreciate you guys dropping by today. And remember, if you want more board game content, please click that subscribe button and turn on notifications so you'll be alerted when my next video comes out. Also, once we get to 100 subscribers, I will reveal to you why I call the channel Corky Quint. Also, for those of you who watch this far, I have a little treat for you guys. I have pre-ordered the world's first flick and write game from Pandasaurus Games called Sonora. That is right, guys. I'm so excited for this game. And when I heard it was coming out, I was like, whoa, I love it. I love it. I love the idea. I love the concept. I love the art. And I pre-ordered that sucker as soon as it dropped on Amazon, which thank you, Pandasaurus Games, for putting that on Amazon because I buy from Amazon all the time. So thank you. So next week, I'll be doing an unboxing for that game and it's going to be amazing. So make sure to come back for that. All right, guys, that's it for today. Keep it quirky. Peace out.